Position one, I say again, position one. She's not helping me out, guys. All right, guys, let's try this one more time. Position one, I say again, position one. Acknowledge position one. Okay. Sometimes the women can be a bit difficult. Morning, guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. Hope you're all doing well. Today, we're gonna to kick off a series that I wanna call No Random Contacts, and the goal is to bring in all of the newbies on the channel. Thanks for joining, guys, really appreciate you and help establish from first principles how to use radio as an alternate form of communication when primary communication like the internet and your cell phone are unavailable. Now to do this, I want to uh, start from the beginning. So we're going to start with what I wanna call concentric circles of communication and basically use a very simple ring analogy, whereby ring zero is your local community, basically all of the neighbors on your street, for example, working your way to ring one, which will be your city, then your county, then your state, then your region, then the country, and potentially we'll also explore the globe. Now to do this, we're also going to define a mission objective upfront with some very specific parameters and criteria that we want to solve for the communication task at hand. We're also going to walk through that exercise in terms of which radios, radio systems, operator qualifications are required and we're going to go through that exercise together and i'm not going to lie to you i'm going to show you the good the bad and the ugly and then we're going to have an after action report highlighting the successes and the failures so we're going to learn together the other thing i want to make the point uh, to everybody is that i am not an expert in communications i've only been doing this for a little over two years as an amateur radio operator so i am learning with you so my goal for these videos is not to tell you what to do but I want you to have a glimpse into what I am personally doing to solve the communication needs for my community, for myself, all the way through the state, because I do want to establish contacts with known quantities or known persons in my support network. So that's a really good definition that we want to get out of the way too, is what is a random contact? Well, a random contact is basically just getting on the air and making a contact with someone that um, you didn't intend to. And this is pretty prevalent in the amateur radio hobby. Instead, we wanna treat this more like a cell phone and your contact list where you pick up a radio and you say, I want to talk to person X and you're able to establish that communication. Radio is a little bit more difficult. I'm not gonna to lie to you. Uh, the type of contact we're going to establish is very dependent on how far that person is uh, and a, really a large set of variables. So there'll be different radios, different antenna systems, different skills and different techniques. And that's why this video is going to be a progressive build. So hopefully you guys will join me in this journey for the rest of the year and uh, it should be fun. So we're gonna start with first principles today and we're gonna take a look at the MERS radio system. All right, for today, we're gonna to work with Ring Zero, which is communications within our community. And our mission objective is to establish alternate communications with our neighborhood, specifically my family and a handful of neighbors and friends. Now, the scenario is power has gone out and it's impacting our local cell towers and also our ability to get online on the internet. So radio is absolutely our alternate form of communication. Now let's talk about the known quantities. I actually have a few. First is uh, myself at the core, my spouse, and then I have three neighbors in the area that live at various uh, distances from my location. Uh, we're also going to borrow a term from the military called the TOC or Tactical Operations Center for all intent and purpose through these series when I'm operating at home, we're gonna establish this as the TOC or the TOC, and that'll be the hub for communication. So this exercise and most of the exercises will be geared around either a fixed TOC or a temporary a mobile TOC. Okay, now that we have a mission objective, we have our known quantities, we need to establish what type of range of communication we need. Well, all of those neighbors fall within about a kilometer's distance, which is, I don't know, about two thirds of a mile. So the choices for solving this problem with radio um, is gonna be uh, pretty easy to solve. 
Uh, the other thing to keep in mind is that I'm the only licensed amateur radio operator. So when there is rule of law, I'm going to try to observe FCC rules and regulations. That means that the other operators, while I have a lot of amateur radio gear, they technically can't use it. Now, stuff goes sideways, different story. So today we're gonna to be uh, compliant with the FCC and I have settled upon uh, the MERS system. It stands for Multi-Use Radio Service. And the reason why I chose it is because number one, I want uh, radios that are accessible to everybody. These radios are license free, which means you don't need any type of license to use them. You can hand them out to anybody. The fact that we're gonna hand them out to anyone means I'm looking for MERS radios that are simple to use. Um, but anyways, I decided to go with the um, Retivus uh, RT21V as in Victor. And the reason for it is that it has no front panel uh, programming whatsoever. There aren't any keys here to confuse anybody. It just has two simple knobs on the top. Just the ability to turn it on. One. And only five frequencies. The nice thing about MERS is that it is channelized. So we have one. So very simple to communicate and hand this to somebody to uh, operate this. Uh, there's only five different channels and basically the ability to turn it on, off, adjust the volume, and very simply press the push to talk button to send whatever traffic you need. So at the end of this, I'll talk about some other radios that evaluated that were merged radios that absolutely failed. But suffice it to say, for this test, we're using the uh, RT21 Victor. Um, the other cool thing about the uh, MERS uh, radio service, uh, outside of it being license free, is that you can actually remove the antennas. All right, so let's talk a little bit about the mission objective we're about to see. For this mission, I had five different quantities, myself included, and a couple of waypoints that I wanted to hit over the course of about two and a half miles going through my neighborhood. I used two of the Retivas 21 Victors, uh, my wife was positioned in her backyard to simulate the TOC and I basically ran on foot and would stop to establish communication at each position. For tracking, I went ahead and just gave her a clipboard with uh, nothing more than the list of the uh, eight positions, the locations, whether she copied the traffic, yes or no, and some notes, and she did a fantastic job, uh, except for that little blooper in the beginning when we first got started. So with that said, let me go ahead and uh, fire up the laptop and we're gonna show you the map and the results and some video of all eight test transmissions. All right guys, you let me know if you like this format, but I wanted to annotate a aerial photograph of my neighborhood and what we did. So we will use this as a tool to aid in the visualization for all of the videos. Now I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out. Uh, as soon as I show you basically the course, I started over here at uh, position one, and then work my way south, then east, then north, west again, and then south until I return to our talk or TOC. So let me zoom in. And this is our first position. I put that I was a distance of 30 meters from my wife. It was mostly a radio check. That was the intro in the clip. Then I moved to position two, which was my first neighbor. Uh, he's about 115 meters from my location. Let's go ahead and take a look at that copy. Position two, I say again, position two. Acknowledge position two. So far so good. All right, so let's go ahead and move down to position three. Now this neighbor is about 800 meters or half a mile. The communication here was questionable, so in the after action report, I'm gonna make the point that we probably need to switch to just a better higher gain antenna, but we were able to have some basic communication. I think if we moved around a little bit, uh, we probably would have been able to have a good copy as well. Let's go ahead and take a look at position three. Position three, I say again, position three. Well, not terribly optimistic about position four, but let's see. Okay, so position four was not an actual uh, known uh, contact that we wanted to make. It was more of a point of interest. 
it was the end of my street and that's the boundary as far as I want to go. And as you'll see in this clip, I actually could not make the contact, but not a real deal breaker in my mind. Position four, I say again, position four. Yeah, this one was uh, doubtful. Position four, I say again, position four. Make sure we're still on channel one. Two, one. All right, position four is a no-go. That's a good data point. All right, so let's go ahead and move over to position five. We were uh, 1.2 kilometers. I have expressed this one in orange, uh, mostly because we were able to get some basic uh, copy going back and forth. It was not great. And just like the previous position, this one was just a uh, waypoint and not an actual point of contact. It was just part of my route coming back and seemed like a good uh, location to try to establish contact again. Position five, I say again, position five. That was sort of a bad copy. Poor copy, I'm gonna say again, position five, position five, can you go again? Hey babe, I did copy you, can you copy me? One more time, please. All right, kind of a crappy uh, reception, another good data point. All right, so let's go ahead now. This was uh, roughly a mile run from this position uh, back to our point uh, farthest north, and we call this one position six. It's about 600 meters point to point uh, from the talk or where my wife was transmitting. Let's give this one a listen. Position six, I say again, position six. Position. Pretty decent copy. All right, on to position seven. Thank you, darling. Okay, so now we're on to position seven. I am directly due north of the talk and at a distance of 445 meters. Communication was excellent here. Uh, like before, this was just a waypoint and not actual a position for a known contact. It just made sense since I was basically rounding the term turn back home. Position seven, I say again, position seven. Acknowledge position seven. All right, so position eight, this is our third neighbor and the clarity of this communication was excellent. And uh, he's about 300 meters, uh, just less than a quarter mile from my location. Let's give this one a listen. Final position, position eight. I say again, position eight. Acknowledge position eight, loud and clear. Well guys, that gave me the data I needed. We'll talk a little bit when I get back to uh, the studio or my dank garage. See you in a bit. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed that uh, mission and the way that I executed it and laid everything out. This is very much gonna be the format that we use, but we are going to go to bigger radios, bigger antenna systems, uh, more involved skill set on the operator, licensing requirements as we build. But by doing so, we're going to open up our ability to communicate. So let's do a very quick after action report. So if I had to grade that uh, mission, I would give it probably a solid B. There is room for improvement. And I want to do two things to change this in the future. Number one, I probably want to experiment with a higher gain antenna. If I do that, we'll go ahead and film a follow-up video. And that should give me the ability to punch through and hit that uh, neighbor on the south side of my street much more reliably. Um, the other thing that I think I want to try is to incorporate my neighbors into the planning and start to socialize with them uh, some testing. I've already talked to them about this, they're open to it, but I actually wanna see them commit to a training exercise Again, if we do that, we'll have a follow-up video for this series. A couple more comments on the Retivas RT21. Victor, let me be clear, I'm not a big fan of Chinese radios, but for $20, for what you get, for the simplicity, I think it's actually probably a good option. The other thing I like about it is that it comes with a charger that uses USB. So if power is out, you can 
presumably charge this and plug this into your vehicle. And then it also comes with an adapter. So very easy for uh, someone else that's not familiar with radio to go ahead and power these. And if you have like the little um, power banks for your phones, you can also use that to charge it. Now, a couple of radios that I looked at that were uh, pretty terrible in my opinion was the first one I bought. This is from Rotivus. It's the RB38 Victor. And I bought it because it looks simple, but it actually wasn't. Uh, turning it on is a pain. You actually have to hold down this button. Power on. And it takes a little Run. bit of time to do that. And the problem is if uh, I hand these to like elderly people, um, you know, they may not be able to turn it on or off. The other problem was that I didn't see a whole lot in the way of a visual indicator when it was on. So I actually let the battery die the first time. It also has a very goofy clip here. Five, one. Or not a clip, but a button that you toggle back and forth to switch the uh, channel nice frequencies. And I really didn't care for that. Um, it did have a cool little display here on the front. So if I switch to Five. different channel, you could see it there. Um, also the performance on this one was atrocious. And that was really the reason why I decided not to use it was because I could barely make a contact past my first neighbor. So this was a hard no-go for me. Now the first MERS radio I bought was actually probably four or five months ago and it is the BTEC V1. And this is actually kind of expensive. I bought it for a different reason. And the reason why I opted not to use it is because it has a front panel display and programming capability and I didn't want to confuse anybody. Number two, this radio is like $80, which is very high in my opinion for this crap Chinese radio. So um, also not something I wanted to deal with. Now, I also wanted to call out the Family Radio Service or FRS. These are the blister pack radios you see at Walmart and the big box stores. These do not have uh, detachable antennas, but they are license free, which means anybody can operate them just by handing it to them. Uh, but given the testing that we had with two watts, the fact that this only has 500 milliwatts, it's basically a quarter of the power, I believe this to be a non-starter, so we will not be talking about FRS. About the only application and success I've had with FRS is to go back and forth between my wife and I to the breaker box outside when the power's out, and I need her to tell me if a circuit has turned back on. Uh, we've also used them when she chases me in the Jeep uh, when I'm driving the RV. But in general, it just makes more sense to go with the MERS radio, so FRS is completely dead to me. Also, FRS is more prolific, which means more traffic. If you go the merge route, I find that there are very few people on those frequencies, especially if you take these to a uh, campsite, for example. All right, and I would be remiss if I didn't tell you about my actual radio. I did a full series on the VX6R. This is an amateur radio. It is quite pricey, but it is absolutely built to last. It's wa waterproof. I can drop it. This is the radio I trust with my life. And the VX6, uh, I have actually applied a modification called the Mars Cap Mod. I talked about this in my video. And it technically um, opens up the transmit ability so that I can actually, in an emergency, in an absence of, absence of rule of law as well, transmit and communicate between these two radios. So now I have the ability to have my full amateur radio capabilities, so much more, and interoperate with the Mars radios. Oh, yeah. So let's talk about what's next. So next up, we are going to skip uh, GMRS because I'm not a licensed GMRS uh, operator. That's actually just a paid uh, license of $35 and covers your family. Uh, the radios become more powerful. So I can't speak to that. So we're going to go straight to amateur radio to discuss again, ring zero, ring one, all the way up to the globe because amateur radio will give us everything we need moving forward. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, this is just the first one to help plant the seed of what's possible and answer those questions. Like I said, the radios, the systems, the techniques are gonna get more advanced. And before I close today, I really wanna thank everybody on Buy Me A Coffee who is supporting me there. You guys are tremendous. I can't keep this channel running without you, so thank you very much. I'm the Tech Prepper. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.